Okay. Thank you very much for your insight. So, Darren, I think the portfolio of evidence is, is everybody's, uh, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say bugbear or opportunity, and particularly in South Africa. Do you want to talk through this? So this was interesting. So we didn't attach any RANDs to this yet. Um, we were more looking at um, how do you, first of all, do you even know what a portfolio of evidence is? Um, it's funny that we should say that to skills of providers, but they tend to think it's the fact that the learner attended training and wrote an exam as a portfolio of evidence. And then I was also recently on a, um, the ILO, which is the International Learning Organization. It's a massive organization out there. And they were talking something which really kind of didn't resonate with me around, oh, you get a portfolio of evidence and then you get videos and checklists and blah. And, and it's very interesting to see people's different perspectives of what a portfolio of evidence is. Um, so, so the one thing um, is that people, so if you see here, for example, 29% of the people have moved to an e-portfolio, 20, 29 has not moved to an e-portfolio um, and 43 on progress. So with the portfolio, um, what's becoming very evident is that our providers don't, or they're starting to wake up to the fact that a portfolio needs to be accessed by many people in, in the ecosystem. And so it shouldn't just be sitting with the learner or just the assessor or just the head office or just there. Um, and, and it's been a quite interesting aha where providers go, yeah, but the portfolio belongs to the learner. So why do you keep it for five years? Well, we have to for the season. Yeah, but it belongs to the learner. So, so well, then they should keep a copy on their hard drive. What the learners who don't have hard drives. And that's kind of the discussion. Um, you know, so, so another thing that's come up is um, a lot of the, the STPs are struggling to increase the portfolio out of a written exam into a applied skill a video or and so we're talking to the qcto the, the, and they go yeah come and do your three-hour exam and, and the question was yeah but a waiter and a bartender and a like rob was saying a, a vocational expert doesn't have three hours to come and write an exam and in english uh to get a you know a level two level two qualification so there's a shift in understanding of what portfolios are and how to use them and then there's also the second shift into digital so um, when you talk about, when Rob was talking about, you know, you walk into a room and there's a foot high of, of portfolios. Well, one of the seaters, which we've seen, they literally have two houses that they are renting. And when you walk into the kitchen and down the passage and into the bedrooms, they are just portfolios strewn all over the house, which of, of course brings a poppy breach um, of, of some kind, but that's what's going on in this world of portfolios. So what we're clearly seeing is that People want to move to it and a little bit don't know how to move to it. And the providers are struggling to articulate what a new type of portfolio acceptance can look like. Um, and, and yeah, that's what this research was pretty much showing us. Well, that's, um, that's critical and, and, and so valuable. And uh, behind this as well is that um, the ability to capture evidence and what that means and how to do that um, often is missing. Um, what is deemed acceptable evidence of competence, which is what a portfolio of evidence is about. And, you know, that science behind the tool is also really, really valuable. Um, would you like to um, move on to the, to the next slide, Darren? 